Okay, so um, this is going to be lesson one, or more precise, lesson one A um, for TV Paint Animation. And in this lesson, you're going to learn how to open and close TV Paint Animation Pro and discover various panels and windows. So let's go and uh, kick the program up. So double click the icon. Okay, and that pops up a preferences panel for the type of project you want to start. So you've got some various things you can go and choose. We're not going to bother with that just for the minute. We're just going to go and say we'll go with the defaults. We will go through this panel in a later video. Uh, just so you know, we are going to come back to all of these things. So we're just going to press OK. And the program launches. And then it's going to draw its panels out. OK. Right, so this is a default um, default layout for TV Paint, and we're going to go through uh, a few things. So let's let's go through the toolbar at the top for a start, which is this along here. Okay, and let me just read from the manual so we're covering it correctly. So the first icons in this toolbar concern traditional functions found in all standard software packages, such as New, Load, uh, Save close so these are going to be for new which is going to start a new project loading which will load an existing project save which is saving a project and close which is close a current project the following icons are used to um, open and close various TV paint animation pro panels which will be the display coordinates light table timeline etc okay so we're talking about this palette along the top or this toolbar along the top so we've got new open, save and close current project and then it's talking about the various panels that are open within the workspace so we've got um, open and close the tools panel so we can see that with these icons with a white background means that these panels are actually currently open so I can close that one for instance or reopen it now an interesting note to uh, this one is the animation timeline by the way Interesting note about um, the panels, it seems to be opening and closing one panel, that's that's absolutely correct, apart from this one here, which is the open and close custom panel. So a custom panel can, can be more than one panel, and the custom panel it's referring to at the moment are, are these three panels here, which is the tool bin, the animator panel, and the sketch panel. If I click on that, all three of them go and all three of them come back. So it's a, a good quick way of cleaning up part of the workspace when you want to uh, want to have a bit more room working on your project. That quickly gets all three of them out of the way. Now there are more than three custom panels. If we look under Windows, under Custom Panels, you see that I've got three of them ticked. So three of them are working, but I can put all of them up. I'm going to put just an extra one up, which is uh, brushes. Um, that's one of my custom ones here. Well, I've picked and mix some of these and some custom brushes from uh, the website that people have created make a new palette and if I close that custom panel now they all go and they all pop back again so it remembers I've switched that one on if I switch that one off if I get rid of that and then I close it and open it yeah it's taken it out of the list and you'll see that also under Windows custom panel it's now not listed as a ticked panel okay so these things work for single panels uh, apart from this one which is a custom panel which is sort of makes sense now that you can make as many panels as you want in there of your own creation and quickly hide them or bring them back okay um, and that will sort of cover a quick overview of this toolbar we are going to go through all these particular things uh, with the, the next 20 or so lessons that we're going to be covering um, so let's move on from there but before actually before we do move on uh, one little tool tip is that we've got all these things are floating panels um, so all these things can be resized and moved around and whatever and to how you want to configure your workspace uh, the only one that does, doesn't at first glance appear to do that is this toolbar because it seems part of the interface but if you see these double lines over the side here if I click and hold that with my left hand mouse button and then with that mouse button still held down drag it away that also becomes then a floating toolbox so you can definitely customize it to work however you like. So if you're running multiple monitors you can have one monitor that is just the workspace of the actual canvas you're playing in and another monitor can be all of the interface, all the tools laid out exactly how you want them to be. If you want this to go back to where it was a minute ago, if I just left hand click and hold on the on the button here and then drag it over just drop it, there we go, it just pops back. Okay, so click on it, pull away, push back, let go. Okay, simple as that. 
All right, so that, that will just cover the main toolbar at the top. Let's move through a quick overview of the rest of the panels. So let's me re let me read from the, uh, the manual here. Okay, so let's move down to the main panel. Okay, so let's read this. Uh, the main panel is used to draw segments, ellipses, rectangles, curves, brush selection, and cutting options are also available here. So basically you draw here, you can tip colors here, you can move and cut out parts of your picture, and you can also go back to where you were a minute ago as well. You can uh, undo and redo or in here as well. And you can make various things to look at and stuff on here. Okay, so underneath that, uh, let's do a quick overview of the color picker. So the color picker panel, which is this one here, the color picker panel is, and let me set it up so it looks just like in the manual. So let's go back to slider, and uh, that will do that. So this panel is used to select the color which you wish to work. So a distinction is made between the A color, always referred to as the main color, in the left-hand rect rectangle, and the B color, which is in the right-hand rectangle. So the rectangles it's referring to in the manual is this one here and this one here. So that's my main colour. So it's pretty easy to sort out. This is my uh, your main colour. It's a bigger rectangle as well, so you now know it's a main colour. And your B colour, which is this one over here. Okay, you've got various ways of mixing colours with sliders, which is R RGB, red, green, blue, HLS, which is hue, saturation and light, uh, level, sorry, light, hello. Um, and then you've got a picker way of uh, selecting colours here. You've got a mixer, you can mix colours and you've got a bin which has got various uh, colour blocks to pick from. Okay, so that's my quick overview of the colour picker. And underneath that we've got the toolbox um, and they've renamed it in, in later versions to the tool airbrush panel. This is a toolbox and we're currently using an airbrush. So um, if you want to go over different tools you'll notice it'll, it'll, it'll tell you which tool you've selected at the top. So this is toolbox and we've got, um, let's go through them, we've got an airbrush, we've got uh, a pen brush, we've got a mechanical pencil brush, we've got an oil brush, a pencil brush, uh, a wet brush, a warp brush, and a special brush, and then we've got uh, text, and then we've got a custom brush as well. So we've got several brushes in here, we'll go pop it back so it's got the same uh, layout on here. Okay, and the toolbox contains a wide choice of buttons. Uh, the toolbox contains a wide choice of buttons corresponding to traditional tools such as airbrush, pencil, wet brush. Various parameters may be set for the size, the power, the opacity, etc. So we've got the size, power, and opacity down here. The aspect ratio of it, the angle that it's working on, and all these various uh, tools we're going to go through at length in future versions, future videos. All right. And then we actually get to the big cheese, which is here. This is your main project window. Pretty obvious that all these tools are going to be working, doing something somewhere, and this is your main window. So the current project window is one that you will work, which you can express your artistic talents and create a wide variety of animated sequences. So this is your canvas as such. Um, but because it's animation as well, you have your typical um, transport controls for forward, rewind, stop, pause and play and you set how many frames a second you're working at and all the rest we're going to go through this at length as well in a future video and then underneath that we've got our layers window here um, so this window is also referred to as a timeline by many users is used to manage your layers and insert keys for your effects we'll discuss this point in subsequent lessons so this is uh, very much if you're going to run this as a uh, a cartoon animation application because you can run it as as creating stills because it's, it's quite good at uh, it's very good at doing artistic uh, natural media type tools so you can do stills on it and run the layers like you would in say um, another 2D application like Photoshop something like that or you could run it also as an animation program in which case the all layers will be running on a similar sort of uh, idea as doing um, animation cartoons where you have different cells, you have a background and above the background you have a mid ground and then you have a foreground and you can have various characters on different layers and they're all doing their thing, doing their animations on different layers and the the, the layer at the top is is the nearest to the sort of the virtual camera as such uh, so it's very, very similar to how it runs in cell animation and also very similar to if you've, if you've used uh, programs like Photoshop or uh, Photo Paint or something like that. 
OK. And how are we doing for time? Oh, we're off. That will do. OK. So we'll come back for part B in a moment. Catch up.